Hello, I'm Blind Man Running. I want to briefly show you why it is taking me so long to do this gas sound. And this is the software I use. It's called Reason, and I am legally blind, so there's no way in hell or God's green earth I can see what I'm doing here. So I need to zoom in. So zoom in. Give you an idea just how close I gotta get to be able to see what I'm doing here. That should do it. These colors also kind of blow away my vision. What little I have, I can't see through all that white. That's how I like it. So uh, each one of these groups here, from up here to down here, represents an instance of the gas sound. Now this top little clip here, if I can aim. There we go. You notice even at this magnification I have to get pretty close sometimes. Um, but here is a note. I can click on it so you can hear. Turn the speakers just to make sure you can hear that. I'm using the webcam speakers, uh, microphones, so not the best to pick up. So that's a little gas sound. I call it gas. It's just uh, white noise with some filters thrown on it to give it that rising and falling um, sound. So every instance, of course, has to have the note. And if I go over here, that's the gas instrument track. This track is to pan it between left and right. This device, this track, is uh, to pan it front to back because I do everything in surround sound. Uh, the mic there isn't going to pick it up, but yeah, I've, I've got speakers all around me. So I've got this guy here, the note. Every one of these uh, panning devices need to be triggered. So that's what this is. It's actually another note. If I were to click on that, you wouldn't hear anything, though. It's not attached to a synthesizer. It's just to let the pan device know that, hey, something's happened. He's playing, so do something. This is to control the spread. That controls the center point. I have nothing here. Uh, I haven't done it in a while. Here it is. Here's one instance. This. These are each lanes, by the way. This is a track divided into lanes. This clip on this lane here lets me know whether to reverse the direction of the panning, left to right or right to left. Uh, this is the front to back, so in this case it would be front to back or, or uh, back to front. So going back over, I'll show you what it takes to put one of these in. I've already got a few instances here. It goes on. For ways, I have about another 20 left to edit. I'm showing you one. I've got the note in, I've got the trigger in. This guy, I'm going to draw. Hit enter to open him. And in here, I want him to be um, three quarters spread. So he's not going to go from all the way from left speaker to right speaker. He's going to be going from somewhere in between. So I double click to create my uh, I don't know, control point. I don't know if they have a name for them. I'm going to get in pretty close here to my face to see where I'm aiming. All the way up is uh, full spread. All the way down I have uh, programs to be at 25% spread. So right around in here. I'll move him over with my keyboard because I cannot aim with my mouse to do that. And up here are the values. I type in, oh wow, would you look at that, 84. I am only one point off from three quarters. It's 85. Um, magic numbers I, I put in. I won't go into how I created the panners. These are not built-in standard panners. I had to program the suckers. 85 represents 75% spread. And I want him to start, I mean the center point to be uh, I don't know, off center. The top is the right speaker, bottom is the left speaker, so 
he'll start, oh, I didn't mean to put in more than one. If I did, I want just the one. There we go. Move him over to the beginning of the clip. He could be anywhere. He could be there. It doesn't matter. But just, just to keep things consistent because um, you can have multiple control points. And you always start at the beginning of the clip just for uh, ease of seeing what's going on. I only need to use one here. I'm not going to change the center point of the pan. So that looks like a safe value to me. I want him to go from right to left instead of left to right. This is either left to right, right to left. There is no in between, so that's an easy one to aim and click for for me. This bottom lane I don't use for this piece of music, but um, if I wanted to manually, I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> Just this is for manual uh, panning, and I don't use it. It's all automatic panning based on a curve, which I'll show you in a, in a second. So that's left to right. Now, right to left, I'm going to say I'm going to do a minimum amount of pan. He's going to be primarily uh, in the front speakers this time. So minimum, maximum spread. Minimum spread is 25%. So that's what we'll do. I want him biased toward the front. Um, which is the bottom in this. Bottom is left or front. Top is right or, or my rear speakers. Um, I'm not going to bother with selecting a, a um, direction. I'll just have beat default left or right, which in this case would be front to back. And the last thing I need to do is figure out where in time this guy is. Because you notice these guys are not lined up with their triggers. So that'll lead to some pretty weird effects, which I am not wanting. So I am on measure. I'm sure you guys can read this later than I can, even over the webcam. 206. I got to get this right. 206 beat 2, 16th note 1, and ticks. It's crazy, there are 240 ticks to a 16th note. In this instance, I decided to leave it right on, right on the, the second beat. So I select these guys, and I select these guys while I'm at it. Holding down the controls so I don't lose these. Make sure. I don't have anyone selected I don't want selected, vice versa, all right, which I do constantly. And click him, type in a two, one, zero, all right, so now they're all lined up. And I'm probably not going to pick this up over the webcam. That went right to left across the stereo field in front of me. Not quite getting to each speaker. It was somewhere in between. So there you go. That's demonstrating uh, how I edit a single instance of the 70 of them I've got in this piece. The music that went pretty quickly, comparatively speaking. Yesterday it took several minutes per, but I was learning the quick way of doing it as I went along. So I'm going to save this while I'm at it. There we go. Another 20 to do today, and then I get to go on to... Uh, another sound effect I have called Fluttering Sweep, which thankfully there ain't so many of them. Oh, I was going to show you what what I meant by the curve. Because uh, you heard it sweep back and forth, but I didn't actually... I am zoomed in way too far for this, even for me. Okay. Now open up this device. There you go. There's a curve. This represents uh, left. That represents right. Well, arbitrary. If I flip it, then this would be right and that would be left. But you can see how it quickly begins to pan from one side to the other, and it slows down as it approaches the end point of the uh, pan. This would be a pain in the butt 
to draw even copy and pasting every time because, uh, well, just the time to copy and paste it. And it would be a bunch of line segments as I created every single dot in the curve. This is an actual true curve, uh, Bezier, I guess. Makes for a smoother pan. I don't know if anyone else does it this way, but uh, no. But this is how I figured out um, how to do what I want to do with smooth panning. So uh, again, oh, lining myself here. Thanks for watching, and uh, it gives you a little uh, taste of the private hell I make for myself in doing these little decorative sounds in my music. Now I get to stop.